All right, I got to have a very serious conversation with a lot of you with this stadium infatuation, all right? Because that's what it is. And in no way, shape, or form am I meaning to sound demeaning or, uh, or anything like that. I I'm, just, I'm just being very honest and sincere here. I really am, right? A lot of you guys have an infatuation with the fact that Fights when when fights happen at a stadium, all right. And I gotta be very honest here. It's obviously a European cultural thing, because it's not a thing here in the U.S. It's not. And and you we know this because there's been fights in the U.S. with not just fighters from here, but fighters from all nationalities that could. Ha have been, you know, in a stadium, right? They could have happened in the stadium, but they didn't, right? Mayweather Pacquiao could have, they could have packed any NFL stadium, right? And they would have filled up every seat in, in the house. It would have happened. They could have fought in, in ATT stadiums in Dallas, Texas, okay? You know, they could have gone, or the Giants play, I forgot the name of that stadium, okay? They could have gone to Lambeau Field, okay? They would have packed that shit, right? They could have gone to the Superdome and packed that, okay? But obviously, it's a little different here, right? We don't do mega fights in stadiums here, right? We just don't look at Oscar De Loya. Yeah, he, he had many big fights. I know, I know, he's been, you know, for other reasons. You know, De Loya's name has been out there, but let me just use him as an example here. All his big fights were in arenas, right? Oscar De La Hoya, all his big gates, his biggest money fights were in arenas. He, he packed the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas. Over, you know, you know what I mean? It, it was it was a stadium, you know. But so what? It didn't matter. It was when De Loya had his quote unquote last fight, right? He had a fight against Stevie Forbes, right? He fought in a stadium. You know, it, it's it's a gimmick, guys. With the exceptions of fights here and there, it, it's it's a gimmick. Back in the you know early 1900s, there was no television that, where you could watch the fights you know live. If you were lucky, you had a radio, right? So in order to see the fight with your eyes, in some capacity, you have to be in, in the in the arena. So they would make them big. So they would make stadiums, right? That is not necessary now because we have this unbelievable technology called the television, right? And today, in 2018, we have smartphones, we have tablets. I mean, we have 3D TVs, okay, which looks like you're watching it there, like literally right there, right? So at the end, end of the day, the necessity of it is gone. All it is now is a gimmick. That's what it is, all right? It's a way to put the event over. That that's all it is. All of Joshua's fights could have been in the O2 arena, all of them, and they would have made pretty much the same amount of money, because the people in the, you know, up in the in the um, in the nosebleeds would have bought the fight on pay per view and watched it that way. Okay. Instead of watching it from the monitor in the in the arena. So this infatuation with stadiums is interesting. But just think about the number of fighters that could fight in stadiums if they wanted to, but choose not to, right? Mayweather could have fought in stadiums. Pacquiao could fight in stadiums over there in the Philippines if he wanted to. Right, he fought in in uh, ATT Stadium against Claudio and Margarito. So it just it, it was a gimmick, and, and Bob Arum admitted admitted that he was promoting the the stadium more than he was the fight sometimes. All right, 
It was a gimmick. That's all it was. All right. So at the end of the day, it doesn't impress me like just that by itself that it's in the stadium. Right. They did that with the Klitschko's and, and, and there's nothing wrong with the fact that that's a cultural thing over there. Right. That's cool. That's just not a thing here. Like, all I'm trying to tell you guys, well, when you tell people from the U.S., like, well, your guy doesn't fight in the stadiums, or you guys don't sell out stadiums, that, that, it just doesn't matter, right? You don't have to bring up the fact that he fights in stadiums to tell me that Anthony Joshua is going to get the lion's share of the money in the Anthony Joshua fight. Like, it's, it's not an argument you have to make to justify that. At the end of the day, bodies in an arena doesn't matter. Money matters. Doesn't matter how you get the money. Money matters, right? If somebody paid you $10,000 to do a job, do you care how, that, how they got that money? Does it matter? No, because money walks and bullshit, okay? Money talks, I'm sorry. Money talks and bullshit walks, guys, right? What do you guys care if, you know, I've been hearing these arguments. Well, if you do the fight in Vegas, there's going to be some empty seats there. So? I mean, that's what you're assuming, but, but let's say your assumption is true. Let's say they do the fight at the MGM Grand Arena. And there's only 7,000 people there for the fight. So? Does it make the fight any better or any less better? If I mean, when that bell rings, do you really care in what arena or what stadium they're at? Does it really matter? Now, I, I think you're wrong about that. It's going to sell out. But, but that's besides the point. What do you care? What do you care if the casino puts them up for money? Because they know they're going to get a lot of gamblers over there in Vegas. They're going to make money off of this. What do you care if HBO slash Showtime or, or slash and, right? What do you care if they put up big money and they lose money in the process? What is that to you? It's not your money. They're putting up the money. And the reason they're putting up that money is because of the bill. And the bill says Joshua versus Wilder. Right? That's what it says. Both fighters are required to make this fight happen. What do you care how Wilder got the 50 million? What do you care? Why does it matter to you how he got the money? If he has the money, right? He has the money. Now, for some reason, people think that him getting 50 million is outrageous. There's no way he could do it, right? But it is a lot of money. And I'll, I'll even be honest. Some people have made it seem like it's like easy to get. Right? It's not easy to get fifty million dollars. It's not. But it's not impossible. Okay? There's an old saying. Now this saying mainly pertains to New York, but also pertains to the US. If you could make it here, you can make it anywhere. Right? It's not impossible for Wilder to have gotten fifty million. Right? What do you care if it was a loan? What do you care if it's a, an investment that they're hoping to make, make it up for? What do you care if it's, you know, if, if they're, you know, how they got the money? What do you care? If he has the money, he has the money. Now, you could dismiss it and you could say, well, he doesn't have the money. Now, before we even talk whether he has the money or not, right? Let's just hypothetically, let's leave that aside. Do you not agree that, that if Joshua said, give me 50 million and I'll fight you, right? Now, I'm not asking you if you think he has the money or not. 
What I'm asking you is, if he does have the money, shouldn't Joshua take that fight if this is exactly what he asked for? He said, give me $50 million, right? If you guys think it's a $100 million fight, then give me $50 million. Technically, that's 50-50. That's what Joshua said. A lot of you guys are scared of just saying, if it's true, you can't even say it. You can't even say, if it's true, then yes, Joshua should make that fight happen, right? I keep hearing, well, this is unfair to Eddie Hearn. You think I care who promotes this fight? Ask the style if he gives a shit who the head promoter of this fight is. I don't care. Okay, I don't care if it. I disagree, but but my disagreement aside, even if it was unfair to Eddie Hearn, I don't care about Eddie Hearn. All right? Joshua could settle whatever he wants to to with Eddie Hearn. All right? They'll have fifty million problems. Okay, it ain't gonna be my problem. That's between them. All right? Oh, it's so unfair to Eddie Hearn. I mean, him and Josh are going to have 50 million problems. Well, th that's their problem. All right? Moving on. Some of you think it's not a real offer. I believe it is. All right? And if you don't believe it's a real offer, right? Why can't Eddie Hearn just say, you know... If it's a real offer, if they really do have the funds, then yes, we'll do the fight. He can't even say that. Not that I've seen anyway. I'm just seeing all oh, this is a troll offer. It's not a real offer. Like, why would they just make this up? They call him out. They call him out on it. Why well, he backed out of a meeting. Look, man, I don't care if somebody backs out of a meeting. or uh, Because right now, honestly, if, if a simple question can't be answered, yes or no, do you take the $50 million, then there's nothing to talk about, right? Simple as that. If you can't say, sure, if you have the $50 million, we can make the fight happen. If you can't even say that, if you can't even say that, right? And then let me go further, because a lot of you guys, you know, you sit there and you're like, hey, do, come on, how is this fight going to make this type of money? They're crazy, right? Then what are you worried about, right? A lot of you don't even like Al Heyman. So it's a win-win for you guys, right? So if Al Heyman, and a, whether it's a group of investors, his own money, whatever it is, guys, okay? What does it matter to you? If he gets $50 million, and he could guarantee that to Anthony Joshua, and then they have the fight in the U.S., the fight flops in terms of money made. It only sells 50,000 pay-per-views, and, and nobody shows up to the MGM Grand Arena. There's only like 400 people there. And, you know, like, like these, these apocalyptic scenarios that you guys are talking about, which will not happen. But let's say it were to happen. Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua are going to take their $50 million. They could go back to England, back to stadiums, laughing all the way to the bank, while Al Heyman just took a big hit and lost a bunch of money. And then you could come on YouTube and brag about you were right. Oh, we told you. If I, it wouldn't have made any money. You know, or whatever, right? You're in a no-lose situation there if it fails. But something tells me a lot of you guys don't want this event to succeed in the U.S. For whatever reason. Like, you're scared. Of the Eddie Hearn doesn't want it to succeed in the U.S. You guys are scared. of like You're scared that like you know what I know. Right? Like, you know... That we already got UK's money. And, and I'm being very honest in saying that. Anyone with a business mind will understand that. Okay? 
you guys are going to stay up that night and you're going to order that fight on pay-per-view in the UK, regardless that, that it's in the US. You're going to buy that fight anyway. We got your money anyway. But to maximize the revenue of this fight, you have to have it in the US because it's an untapped market and it's a much bigger market. All right? That's how Ricky Haddon made more money here, not over there. That's why Conor McGregor makes more money here, not over there. That's why Pacquiao makes more money here, not in the Philippines. That's why Gennady Golovkin makes more money here, not over there in, the, in, the, you know, in uh, Kazakhstan. Right? There are very few exceptions. But in this case, do you not understand... That the money from the UK is already guaranteed. It's cake. It's going to happen. They're going to buy it. They're going to buy the fight. The people, instead of being up there in the nosebleeds in the stadium, they're going to buy the fight on pay-per-view in their home. And you guys know you are. You know you're buying this fight. You know you are. Like you, The money is there. It, the money's cake. All right? And then, in the U.S., can the fight do a million buys? I'll be honest. It's going to be tough for it to do a million buys in the U.S. It's possible. It's possible. But even if it, even if it does 500,000 buys, which is very possible, I would say it's going to do around that amount. That's a lot of money. I know you guys pay like a very small amount for pay-per-view fights. We don't pay small amounts over here. Okay? And just to give you an idea, it'll probably be about $79.99. That's $80. Okay? If you want to watch it in high definition. In some states, I mean, you're talking about a 10% tax on top of that. So, it's... It takes about three or four of your pay-per-view buys to equate one of ours. All right? That's just the way it is. All right? That's the reality. Those are the facts. Leaving that aside. All right? Probably three, three and a half, something like that. But, but anyway. But that's an untapped market. All right? And then you're going to make real money out of the gate. If you put the fight in a casino, the casino is going to give you more money than you are selling tickets in the stadium. Right? That's the reason Mayweather and Pacquiao fought in a, in, in a casino right? rather than selling out a big stadium. And no, I'm not comparing the fights. I know the other one's bigger. Stop telling me points that don't need to be made. Right? Get what I'm trying to say rather than just trying to be a contrarian about everything. Listen. And then, not only is, is the casino going to give you money, you're going to sell high-end tickets. A lot of celebrities, just the celebrities alone sitting front row, okay, it's going to make up for most of that stadium money, okay? Probably even surpass it. That's just the reality. How much you think 50 cents going to pay for a front row ticket? How, how much you think he's going to be willing to pay? And believe me, these celebrities, they'll pay it. And it's Vegas? Man, cake. So at the end of the day, you guys need to understand, this is in 1908. You know, back in the day, Jack Dempsey sold out a stadium. That was impressive because, you know what? 100,000 people watch the fight live. Wow. 100,000 is nothing. We're going to have millions, tens of millions of people watch this fight around the world. It's a different time. All right? It's a different time. So it's they couldn't do that back then. So that was impressive back in the day, you know? It's like back in the day, a superstore was impressive. Like, oh, my God, look at this big store. Look at this huge toy store. Remember when Toys R Us first came out? 
And you have toys all over the place. And, oh, my God, it's huge. You got to get on a ladder sometimes to, to get some of the toys up there. Then what happened? Well, everything went to the Internet, right? People were able to order shit you know, on the Internet, and that's why it went out of business. People don't care about superstores anymore. Yeah, you could have a superstore, you know, Walmart. People still go to Walmart, you know. But a lot of these retail stores are suffering right now. And a lot of them are even selling, even Walmart shit online, right? And the reason for that is because a big store where you could have, let's say, a million items at one time. I'm being very generous there, right? Let's say 500,000 items at one time in one store. Wow, what a big store. You could have billions of items, all right, online. It's not comparable. So it's just like a stadium is not impressive. It's a gimmick. And we're talking about people. What makes the person in the U.S. Right, spending $79.99 for the pay-per-view you know, to, to be able to watch the fight live any different than the person sitting up in the nosebleeds over there in the stadium paying twenty nine ninety nine. The guy that bought our paper actually contributed more to the fight. All right? The paper costs as much as some good seats. All right? I mean, it's in the comfort of your own home. So that's all I'm saying. This is the style. I'm out.